All right, guys, Boruto episode 192 review. This episode right here, man, it was pretty much produced to damn near perfection. There's definitely some very important messaging in it, but the overall premise of this episode was, of course, to show us the backstory of Kawaki himself. Now, of course, as I said, some very important messaging here. I don't necessarily want to talk about it too much in depth because I don't necessarily want to get my video blacklisted from YouTube or anything like that. But regardless, you got to see the Boruto Rise actually dive into the topic with trafficking, which is a real and prevalent problem. The way they did it in this episode was absolutely amazing. It pretty much took everybody off guard essentially the same way it happened in real life and it completely flowed in this episode. Every time a Boruto tries to attack real world problems, for example, they did one of their episodes based on self-harm as well. That episode right there flowed absolutely amazing as well. But this episode right here took it to a completely different level. Now, the backstory of Kawaki was super grim. Now, I kind of understood that it was going to be grim based on the Boruto manga, but I didn't necessarily think it was going to be just like this. Now, I did kind of get to find out a couple of things about Kawaki his father and why he was actually terrible it seemed like he was actually a shinobi back in the past and he did fight in the great shinobi war i'm not 100 sure if he's actually from one of the five great nations but even still victor wasn't really part of the five great nations as well but he still fought in the fourth great shinobi war as well in this particular situation though it seems like he didn't necessarily 100 recover from the fourth great ninja war and he developed an actual drinking addiction now kawaki was the person basically running his errands this right here seems absolutely terrible minimum because he had to actually make his own money chopping woods and then he go buy the actual alcohol with that money that he used to actually chop the wood that right there seemed like an absolutely terrible situation and just thinking about the overall premise of what kawaki had to go through he went from a character like his father to another character like jigen which is basically treating kawaki like a quote-unquote vessel where he actually is essentially a vessel he's not necessarily going to be able to live out his own life the crazy part about this is the fact that everything possibly played out for the best case scenario for kawaki i mean he had to choose between an alcoholic and abusive father a trafficker and Jigen, which is pretty much the leader of the Kata organization. But because he did choose Jigen, he actually got to escape. And now it seems like he's going to be with Naruto from now on. Obviously, we have absolutely no idea if Jigen's going to come back for Kawaki anime wise. Now he's with Naruto. Essentially, he's probably going to have like a brother figure with Boruto and a sister figure with Himawadi with like a normal, stable family. Not necessarily completely normal, man, because they are a family full of Shinobis. But you guys get my gist. It's going to be a lot more normal than what Kawaki had to deal with back in his past. And to be honest, I do want to get give a big shout out to the real mvp of this whole storyline right here it's pretty much that kid that hit kawaki and caused him to bleed and of course then delta found the napkin with kawaki's blood on it and then that's how she found out that kawaki could possibly be a very good vessel for jigen so of course that guy right there is the real mvp it didn't feel like it in a moment but 2020 hindsight that guy right there was definitely the real mvp now another thing that i did kind of want to talk about is the fact that we got to see jigen a little bit in this episode and we didn't necessarily get to see him fight now of course i talked about the trafficking situation and the trafficker basically confronted jigen while jigen was walking out of the village with kawaki now what the riders actually did was they had kawaki walk outside of the cave let jigen handle his business inside of the cage so we can't necessarily see jigen fight and then everything was finished now Jigen didn't necessarily say that he fought, but let's be honest, Jigen's probably not going to solve a situation like this without fighting Milam because he is the leader of a very dangerous organization, and because he is going to be the leader of that very dangerous organization, showing us his first battle against a trafficker probably would not be worth it for the board to riders, so you can't necessarily fault the board to riders for that, but I would have loved to see Jigen do at least something to that trafficker, bruh. I'm not even gonna lie to you, but let me maintain my composure. One of the underrated things that I did kind of notice that I weren't that I wasn't necessarily talking about in regards to the board to anime was Jigen's karma seal. Now, of course, when we seen this in the board to manga, everybody was completely freaking out, mainly because Jigen, this unknown person, actually had a karma seal. Now, on top of the fact that Boruto had a karma seal, Kawaki had a karma seal, and now this other person named Jigen has a karma seal, we had to figure out exactly how he got the karma seal. Now, at this particular point, anime-wise, it seemed like the only way you actually get the karma seal is if you kill an old Suzuki member. When Momoshiki talked to Boruto, Momoshiki told Boruto that because you killed an old Suzuki member, you could no longer remain a regular human being. Now, the leader of the Kata organization has a karma seal. This right here 100% makes it seem that Jigen himself was actually strong enough to defeat an old Suzuki member. And if he was strong enough to defeat an old Suzuki member, what kind of multiplier is the karma seal going to give a grown man like that? Now, in the terms of Kawaka, we understand that it's not going to be 100% accurate to actually say that he was strong enough to kill an old Suzuki member because we understand Boruto himself was not strong enough to kill an old Suzuki member. Naruto and Sasuke did most of the damage. And of course, the final blow was actually dealt with the 
chakra of Naruto himself. So of course, because of that, we could possibly assume that Jigen probably fought against another old Suki member, got him super weak, and then of course Kawaki got the Karma Seal that way. That right there was my thinking before, but for me it was just really interesting noticing that how I never really talked about Jigen with the Karma Seal and what I was thinking at that particular point when we first found out that Jigen did actually have a Karma Seal. But in this episode right here, Jigen's Karma Seal was literally on full display. It was basically in every single frame that we did actually see Jigen. It was absolutely insane. It's like they were actually king in trying to make a see like, hey, Jigen actually does have a Karma Seal. Now it's very interesting, man, because the Karma Seals that Boruto and Kawaki has, it's on their hands, and Jigen's Karma Seal right now is on his chin. But regardless, this this episode right here was absolutely amazing touched on some very important things and the thing that i do like about the boruto anime is that whenever they do tackle very important messages like this they just seem to always do it in the right way which i'm super happy for but let me know what you guys think about this episode in the comment section below me personally i loved it i can't wait to see kawaki and naruto and boruto himawada and hinata bond together at the house of naruto i'm going to talk about that a little bit more i do talk about the spoils for the next episode of the boruto anime but it's being boy barbie and we out it's a knife.